Good morning, everybody. Welcome to New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Um, we're going to kick off today's uh, media availability uh, with some guests from uh, Hendrick Motorsports. Um, we have to my far right Doug Ducart, who is the general manager of Hendrick. Uh, in the middle is uh, um, Alex Bowman, uh, who is a substitute driver this weekend in the number 88 nationwide Chevrolet. And his crew chief for the weekend uh, to his left is Greg Ives. Um, wanted to start off actually just uh, providing a little bit of background on uh, NASCAR's uh, concussion protocol. Um, as you know, uh, NASCAR requires drivers to submit a baseline neurocognitive assessment, such as an impact test. And again, those are only one tool as a prerequisite for being licensed to compete. This mandate followed a comprehensive industry-wide education process launched by NASCAR in 2013. Additionally, NASCAR's medical advisory group, a team of consulting physicians who work directly with the league on policy development while regularly meeting with drivers to continue the education process, includes many leaders in the neurological field, uh, such as Dr. Vijay Deshmukh of the Carolina Neuro Neurosurgery and Spine Associates. Um, another important element uh, worth noting in the process is the active role our drivers and teams take in monitoring their health. Uh, drivers approach this responsibility very seriously, and that ultimately benefits their entire team the sport, and their fellow competitors. We applaud Dale Earnhardt Jr. for being a great example dating back to 2012 where he chose not to race in Charlotte and in Kansas during the chase and has made that decision this weekend as well. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Ducart who has some opening remarks related to the process uh, that led to uh, Dale making the decision not to compete this weekend. Greg? Uh, thank you, Dave. So I just wanted to lay out kind of what the timeline was for us and how the week went. Um, there's a lot of questions I know on how we got to this point. Um, at Kentucky, Dale started talking to Greg that he wasn't really feeling right. And I think as Dale pointed out in the statement, he felt like he had cold or flu or some sinus infection. Uh, that was causing him to not feel well. Um, on Tuesday, uh, he notified Greg and I Tuesday morning um, before a competition meeting that he still wasn't feeling real well. He had gone to the doctor to try to understand what he had going on. Again, he thought he had some sort of sinus infection. And at that point, he told Greg and I to be thinking about potential backup plans if we had to put someone in the car to, to um, backfill for him, like, he would start the car and we might have a replacement driver after he started the car to have a contingency plan for that. And at that point, that's when Dale and Greg and I felt like Alex was the right person. He's run the Xfinity car. He's done a good job in that car. He uh, is part of the junior motorsport system, part of our system. Um, and so Greg reached out to Alex. Alex came in Tuesday night to get fitted for the car. And at that time, it was in the contingency that we, he would have to backfill for Dale after Dale started the race. Um, Dale then went and saw uh, a team of neurologists uh, and in the past two days have been going through some tests and uh, last or yesterday around noon is when I found out that Dale could not be in the car uh, for this weekend based on their suggestion. And of course, as Rick said, he, we 100% support that and as Dave said, we're proud of of him making that decision. The most important thing in this whole process is for Dale to get better and feel better. And we're gonna let that happen on the timeline that it's gonna happen on. Uh, and so basically less than 24 hours ago is when we found out that Dale couldn't run. Uh, we had Alex lined up to be in the car. It made perfect sense. And I have confidence in he and Greg will do a good job this weekend. Thanks, Doug. Um, just a question for you, Alex. Obviously a lot that's happened in the last 12 hours. Um, share with us uh, your approach to this weekend, uh, obviously your experience in the Sprint Cup over the last couple of years and how that may apply to uh, your racing 
uh, this weekend here in New Hampshire? Yeah, it's been a, a crazy 12 hours for sure. Um, I think the first time Greg called me, I was at work, so I didn't even answer. Um, but it's definitely not the the circumstances that, that I want to get an opportunity like this. But um, obviously, Hopendale feels better. But at the same time, it's, uh, it's the best opportunity I've ever had in my life. And um, I'm ready to just plug into uh, to their program and, and do my job, give the best feedback I can, and, and go from there. I, um, I'm really confident in the whole team. Obviously, they bring great race cars to the track every weekend. So if I just do my job, I feel like we uh, I'll just be good to plug into it. All right, thanks, Alex. We'll actually open it up for questions now for Greg or Doug or Alex. We'll start in the front row with Kenny and over the Bob and then to Claire B. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com. For Doug, uh, in the statement yesterday, the official statement from Hendrick was that he wasn't, that Dale Jr. was not cleared to race. And in Dale's quote, he said the doctors felt it was best that he didn't race. Uh, who's, ultimately, whose decision was it? Was, would the doctors not have cleared him? How would that have all gone down? I guess I wasn't in the room when all the discussion happened, but I, I feel like the, my understanding was Dale was told that he shouldn't race. And, and I think that he had that, you know, he knew he wasn't feeling well and had concerns about being in the car and running the whole race earlier in the week just based on how he's feeling. And then I think as he gained more knowledge, found out that, that he really needed to, to get healed, he needed to be out of the car. So I wasn't in the middle of those conversations to know the exact wording, but I think the joint between Dale and his doctors, they, the best thing for him to get better is to get out of the car. Yeah, but ultimately it would have been his, his decision? I, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't there. All right, we'll go Bob, Claire B, and then over to Jim. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, for Doug, I kind of have two questions. Uh, the first is, is there any concern that this could be career-threatening or career-ending for Dale? And then also, did you all talk and or will consider asking Jeff Gordon to go and get in the car? I certainly, I'm not going to speculate on uh, Dale's future. I mean, I'll, again, the most important thing is for this process to play out for him to feel better. And at the end of all that, what's the right thing to do? That, that'll, that'll become clear when more knowledge is gained on how he's feeling. As far as Jeff's situation, um, I mean, certainly, you know, he's a four-time champion, 93 wins. He's not a bad person to think about to put in the car. This week, he's in France. So, and, and obviously, in the way I laid out the way the week went, that wasn't even, we didn't even think we were going to need a replacement driver. We just thought we were needing a backup driver. Um, However, if Dale is not able to go in Indianapolis, we will put Jeff Gordon in the car. For sure? That's for sure. Okay. If Dale's not ready. I mean, obviously, we want Dale to get, when Dale is ready, it's his car to get back into. But if Dale can't go next week, Jeff Gordon will be the driver at Indianapolis. Claire B, then to Jim. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I have two questions. One is for Greg Ives. Greg, what kind of conversations have you had with Dale? And if you look at the video, he mentioned Michigan and Daytona, that those hits were not seemingly that hard. Were you aware at that time that he had, you know, maybe suffered something where he hit his head or it was violent or, and, and or what kind of conversations have you had with him? No, I mean, I haven't, you know, with Michigan or Daytona, I, I, I don't know any of those uh, scenarios to, you know, for him to say that he didn't feel well there. Uh, basically, the timeline of what Doug spoke about what is basically how it all came about to me, and um, that's how we gained the knowledge about um, Dale's condition and how he felt. So, you know, really just based on allergies and uh, potential sinus infection is kind of where he thought he was having uh, some issues. So, you know, speculating back back then, I don't, I don't know, because that wasn't even on the top of my mind. And Doug, you talked about uh, you're not going to speculate about career ending. Uh, what have the doctors said, like, we've just got to wait and see, we'll take it one week at a time, is there any light of Indianapolis? And there's a lot of questions about whether young drivers would even recognize a concussion if Dale Jr., who's so schooled in it and has visited many doctors, would think it's an allergy. Is it something he's picking up on uh, that I mean, maybe others wouldn't? Yeah, I think Dale's become more aware over the years, and I think, you know, he's, to his credit, and I think this is important, is... 
and I think I've heard this in some of the, um, the dialogue since the announcement is, the only person that knows how you feel is yourself. I mean, the, the, you know, any, anyone to, to know, well, I don't feel right today, it has to be you. No one else can do that for you. So you have to be self-aware of how your body responds, and everyone's different. So, I mean, so for Dale, he, you know, I know, I, I could tell that when he called me Tuesday, it was a tough conversation because, you know, I, I know for him, as much as he's doing the right thing and he knows he's trying to do th right, doing the right thing for himself, I know he feels bad that he feels like he's letting Greg and the team down. But that's just natural. And I, and I think that, you know, and, and that's, that's how any of us would feel. And that's how the sport's been for a lot of years. And I think one of the good things that's come about is this point system and the way we approach, you know, in the, in the previous, in the, in the, when I say, you know, way back in the, in, before the chase, you know, missing a race basically cost you, you weren't going to make a championship or get a championship. And I think now, you know, NASCAR system has allowed you to um, take a step back if you're not feeling well or something happened in an incident on a track, and then you can come and, and hopefully, you know, we'll apply for a waiver when the time's right and, and hopefully still have a potential of moving forward. But the important thing is Dale recognized he had something going on and took a step out. And, and how, how that is for younger drivers or younger people, I think it's not only drivers, it's, you know, it's football players, it's baseball players, it's anyone in sports, anyone that, you know, falls off a scooter, you know, do you, do you know if something happened to you? So. Maybe until it happens a couple times. I haven't had it, so it's hard for me to speculate. We'll go to Jim Utter, and then to Lee, and then over to Mike Hembry. Jim Utter, Motorsport.com. For Doug, it's kind of a following up. A lot of people have been playing videos and talking about Michigan and Daytona, but is there ever any serious indication that he even suffered a concussion in those races, or is this part of a lingering problem from previous incidents? And while we're here this weekend, are they continuing – is he continuing to undergo tests to even discover that, or try to discover the answer to that question? I think the first part of your question, it's, it's really hard for me to say on, on, that, on that, Jim. Um, I don't, you know, he, nothing was said to us after Michigan or Daytona. So, so we didn't know of anything until he started talking to Greg about not feeling quite right in Kentucky and then Tuesdays when the first time he talked to me, so I can't say regarding Michigan and Daytona. Um, and so I'm sorry, the second part of your question. Part is the flower, this weekend, is he still oh, I, I think this weekend he's just, you know, per doctor's orders, laying low like most most people in these situations is not, you know, minimum stimulation and 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 just work to get better and 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 um, keep activities down. Okay, we'll go with Lee to Mike and then over to Nate. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com and XM Series NASCAR Radio. Doug, is he going through this, a similar protocol to what he followed in 2012? And then I have a follow-up for Alex. Claire, I haven't been um, – Claire. That's Claire. That's Lee. <laughs> Lee, That's okay. my, my fellow Cardinal fan, I apologize, Lee. Lee, I, I haven't been exposed to what the – what he, he and his doctors have said and what the plan is. So I don't, I haven't spoken to Dale. And so that's, that's between him and his doctors. I don't know what is, what he's doing. And, and Alex, can you just talk about what a champion Dale Jr. has been for you in your career? Because certainly the opportunity he gave you at JRM, even though it's on a limited basis, um, has really given you an opportunity to showcase what you're capable of doing in quality equipment. Yeah, I think um, I think I can really thank Dale Jr. for saving my career two years ago, pretty much, um, with those two Xfinity races at, at Charlotte and Phoenix, and then for the opportunity to run nine races this year with him. Um, obviously, we've been knocking on the door to get some wins, and it's been a lot of fun. Um, so he's been a good friend to me. He's uh, He's been somebody that I can lean on all the time. Um, Obviously, I, I hate to see him not feeling well. I mean, that was my, my first thought. Um, but he, uh, he's done a lot for my career, and I, uh, I couldn't be any more thankful than I am. I, I owe him a lot. So it's, uh, it's just been an honor to, uh, to get the phone call to fill in for him. Mike Kembry and then Nate Ryan. And then over here. here. Mike Kembry, USA Today. Uh, one for Doug and Alex. Uh, 
Doug, can you put some kind of timeline on next week when a decision would have to be made, Dale or, or Jeff? I'd say probably around Wednesday. You know, for Greg um, and the team, you know, you have to, you have to, you know, certainly the way Jeff sits in the car and what we have to do to repair the car for Jeff, um, they, they had to get ready for that. But I think I, I would be looking around Wednesday time frame. Do you think Jeff might drive going forward if this extends over a period of weeks? I really don't want to speculate on on past Indy. Um, I, I think we just want to take it one race at a time here. And, and I think putting any speculation past that is is assuming that Dale's not going to be ready for that amount of time. I mean, we'll obviously be thinking about contingency plans, but I really don't. We don't have anything formalized for sure past Indy. And Alex, in a tough situation, this is obviously a unique opportunity for you. How do you balance trying to show what you can do in this race while also not getting overboard, crashing the car? Where's that line for you? Yeah, kind of like what I was saying at first, my job is just to plug in to the 88 race team and, and do I'm – not, I'm not here to try to be Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm my own person, but – I just need to plug in and, and give them the best feedback I can, um, just be a part of their program in a similar way that, that Dale would be. So um, I just got to do my job. I'm not here to uh, – obviously, I would like to impress people, but I'm, I'm not going to do anything crazy. I'm just here to, uh, to plug into their race team. Okay, we'll go with Nate Ryan. We'll go over to PRN and then to Bob. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. For Doug. Following up on what Kenny was asking, the release says con concussion symptoms. Has he been diagnosed with a concussion? Um, can you offer any clarity there? And, and can you also, tying into that, like with the mandatory baseline testing that NASCAR instituted a couple of years ago, do you understand from them like how that will determine the diagnosis or determine whether he's able to come back? Well, do you understand like how that will fit in with that being a relatively new instrument? I think the difficult thing for me is that I don't know all those details. But the reason is, you know, that's between Dale and his doctors. And then, you know, that it's not it's not for me to know all those details. Um, Dale and his doctors made the decision that this is the right thing for him to do this weekend and moving forward until he's better. So I don't know the details of what the diagnosis is. Um, and I don't know that I need to because that's that's really between them to sort that out. Um, and so, you know, he's ta he's doing what they they suggested, and to try to get better. And so we'll just we'll see where all that takes us. Have you gotten any tidbits from NASCAR on how baseline testing might come into play here for him? No, I have not. We have not talked about that yet. No. Just some clarity on that too. Also, for a competitor to return to racing in NASCAR, uh, we need to receive an. Um, an independent, uh, a notice from an independent board certified neurologist. So that would be our expectation um, that the driver is prepared and able to compete um, in our sport. So we'll now move that over here and then up to Bob and then we'll wrap it up with Claire B. Mark Garrell, PRN. Uh, this this question is for Greg. Greg, uh, obviously you guys are battling to get into the chase, get a win to lock yourself in. This obviously is going to be a setback to that. How does your team react to that, or is it not even part of your thinking because you just want you just yeah. want the guy back in your car? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> really, the first thing that comes to mind is has nothing to do with championship wins or 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 the racing side of it. It's always uh, understanding, you know, what what Dale's going through, which I can't because I've never been through that, but um, just making sure that he gets better, uh, supporting him and his decision. Um, you know, it takes, takes a lot to uh, come out and, and, and uh, address some of the, the health concern that he had. Uh, so I really commend him for that. But, um, you know, the whole, whole time it's not about, you know, who are we going to get to backfill, who, what, what are we going to do when he does come back. It's all about, you know, him getting better on a timeline that's satisfied to him. Uh, not anything to do with the chase, not to do points or, 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 or anything like that. Our team supports him 100%. We have a relationship that goes beyond driver. So that's um, something that's more important than anything. I'll go to Bob, and we'll wrap it up with Claire B. Lang. Uh, 
about Packer CSPN, a couple more for Doug. Are you comfortable with kind of the protocol and the way that this happens where the driver is pretty much responsible for, you know, letting NASCAR know about their health? And, you know, I'm curious if you check G's from data recorders from these past wrecks to see if there were any indications. And then also, um, obviously, if Dale Jr. misses a two or three races, some would say there isn't a ton to race for the rest of the year would, if, if he's not in the chase. Would, would that factor into any decision on when he comes back? Okay, let's see. So first on if the G's and the crash recorders. Um, we, we, to my knowledge, we haven't pulled all this, but obviously, you know, the last two or three days when all this has, has come up, and obviously that's data that NASCAR has that that we would have to ask them and they would be have to be willing to share, and they usually are very good about that. Um, but that that has, I mean, to my knowledge, we haven't done that yet. Um, so we'll just, I mean, you, but the point is you have to learn from everything, so I'm sure we will go back and take a look at, at some of what, what those, uh, those Gs were. Uh, yeah, we're just. I'm just. Yeah, I, I'm not going to speculate on the what ifs on all that stuff. I think it's, you know, great. We, what we're trying to make the, the point is that, as as we gain information through this, we'll 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 look at the scenario as it as it moves each, you know, whether it's short term or long term. Um, but until we get to that point, then you know, I'm not going to speculate on what we're going to do. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM, NASCAR Radio. I want to go back to Greg Ives. Greg, I remember when Dale Jr. Uh, had the issue in 2012, and he was at the back of the hauler after the race with Steve Letarte, and in a daze, you could just tell something was wrong. I watched a video where Dale said he was looking through people. And a lot of us are thinking about you having a close relationship with him and uh, the, uh, the allergy situation. Did, have you, did you have discussions with him where you noticed that anything seemed awry? And uh, the allergy, would that just be like a headache that he had? Yeah, I mean, as far as that goes, I do not know. I'm not a doctor. I work on race cars and, and computers all day. So, um, you know, as far as him and our relationship at the racetrack, um, you know, I didn't notice anything different other than him not telling me he was not feeling well. So anything beyond that, I, I do not have an idea of what's going on other than tight, loose, and what he tells me yeah. on that side of things. But... Um, you know, it's like Doug has probably highlighted before. It's really up to the, the individual to know how they feel. Um, you know, I may have, I may be sick one day and not tell Dale, and he may not know unless I tell him. So, um, it's really hard to say. And again, for clarification, when is the very first time you had any indication, other than maybe he has some sort of allergy, that it might be something more serious? Uh, you know, really, um, it was. As Doug put it, you know, Tuesday he said he was going to get checked out, and, and Wednesday is really when he started thinking that it might have been something ser more serious. Um, but we didn't know until t uh, Thursday about noon, um, you know, that he was going to be out of the car for that reason. So I'll just say Tuesdays we have our competition meeting, and he shows up, and he's just normal Dale. You know, I, I think, I mean, it was Mexican Day, so he was in a good mood. You know what I mean? So... <laughs> It was just normal day, you know. If, if if you sat down and and listened to him discuss the Kentucky race, you I mean you guys know him well enough. You would just think it's no different, you know, just the same thing every week the way he is. Do you know what the symptoms were? Did he have headaches? What was the allergy symptoms? I think he just felt a lot of pressure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in, and uh, good luck, Greg and uh, Alex, this weekend. Thanks.